Blender is now very powerful. In fact, it is better than Maya and Max in many aspects. On top of that, it is completely free. So how come VFX and game development studios are not jumping on it like it is the last lifeboat leaving the Titanic? To answer this question and more, stick around because I will share with you my thoughts on some realities that you as a Blender artist can helpfully change. Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys that the Blender market is having right now a huge summer sale with 25% discount on add-ons, courses, shaders, you name it. So to take advantage of this opportunity, I prepared for you guys a list of the best Blender add-ons and courses and you will find all the necessary links in the description down below. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Blender has been around for a long time. Since the early 90s, when Tan Rosendell, the creator of this program, was a young and ambitious man. So this was about 30 years ago, which was a long time ago. In fact, Blender is so old to the extent that most of you guys weren't born around that time. I mean when it was first released. And for those who remember the old days, I am sure it was a heck of an experience to see Blender grow and become what it is today. Animation, VFX, and game development studios have been a thing for a long time as well. Until this point, of course, because entertainment is a huge part of our daily lives. The studios have used a variety of 3D software like Max, Maya, Houdini, ZBrush, Cinema 4D, and so on since the early days. But the question that begs to be asked is why Blender wasn't used in the industry like the other software on the market today at least why to the same extent. First of all, Blender was intended to be a software for the community because, if you remember in 2002, it was bought by Todd Wiesendahl and the Blender community from Not A Number, the company that originally owned it. So the Blender community gathered and paid 100,000 euros to get it back and make it free and open source. So as you can see, from the get-go, Blender was by the community for the community which made it possible for anyone, no matter who you are, to put your hands on a real 3D software that was capable of many things, including advanced 3D modeling, animation, lighting, rendering, and so much more. On the other hand, most free 3D software weren't even as close as being as good as Blender back then, and this is still very true to this day. As you may or may not know, most 3D animation, VFX or game development studios are owned by a variety of entities, including individuals, private companies, public corporations, and even partnerships. So as you can see, none or most of the ownership of studios goes back to anyone or anything but an art community or something even close to that. Ownership structures vary widely in the industry. So some studios are independent and owned by their founders or private investors, while others might be subsidiaries of large companies, conglomerates, or publishers, like EA, Activision Blizzard, Tencent, and many others. The ownership landscape in the game development industry or VFX is dynamic and can change over time due to acquisitions, mergers, and other stuff that I don't want to get into. So my point is, even if the product is about entertainment and art, the guys in control only care about what brings success and profits from their movies or video games, which makes sense. And compared to the other software in the market, like Autodesk Max, Maya, and SideFX Houdini, Blender was not under development and maintenance by a big company like Autodesk, Maxon, or SideFX, which have hundreds or thousands of developers working on them to make sure the software has everything they need so that studios and artists can work on their projects comfortably. But also, most importantly, support, which is extremely important if anything goes wrong or if artists need anything. For example, one artist from the studio can do certain tasks and if they want to know how to do them, they need support. Maybe something doesn't work as it should be so support can give them a solution or show them a way around it. Also sometimes, and this is expected nowadays, 
which is when studios need to develop their own custom tools and scripts that they need to work within the 3D software to automate certain tasks or optimize the workflow or the pipeline. These tools are otherwise known as add-ons or scripts, and they are also popular among independent artists and indie studios. In fact, some 3D software have around them a complete ecosystem of these plugins or add-ons that make it very hard for studios to work without them, like the case of 3ds Max, for example, which has some of the most impressive third-party add-ons that you can find anywhere else, because there are entire companies creating these tools for studios, because seemingly Autodesk is lazy and can create some of the amazing stuff that these guys have. My point is, studios with their millions of dollars on the line, tight deadlines, fans waiting for video games or movies to be released, they can't help it but use a 3D software which is developed, maintained and has support from a company that makes sure to give them the best experience for their money. Even though Blender is free to use, even for commercial purposes, the problem is that it is developed by a non-profit organization which is the Blender Foundation for those who are wondering. Until the moment of making this video, the Blender Foundation does not offer support for studios, small or large, simply because it is not a commercial software like Max or Maya is, and it does not have the necessary resources to do so. To my knowledge, it currently has between 20 to 30 developers working full time and they are doing a fantastic job bringing many tools and features that put big software development companies like Autodesk and Max on to shame. This is possible due to donations from artists and small companies from the community in addition to corporate donors like Epic Games, Meta, Google, Apple, Ubisoft, you name it. These big players know that Blender is coming, and it is coming in hot, sooner or later, so they want to be on the right side of history. On a side note, I have come across a company that offers support for Blender users and studios called Canonical which partnered with the Blender Foundation back in 2021, but I don't know how good that is and how great the support they offer is. So we will talk about that later, hopefully in another video. But from what I can see, the fact that Blender is not developed by a big company kind of breeds a lack of trust. A lack of trust not in Blender's capabilities of being a good software. No, no, no. I would say this comes from what this type of work demands from studios and Blender regardless of being a great software can't fulfill this right now, especially for big companies. What makes it even harder to make Blender the centerpiece of any studio is that each one of them already has an industry standard 3D package filling this role. Whether it be better or worse than Blender, I don't think this is very important for them because for the most part their 3D package gets the job done. And this has been the case for many years or even decades. You know, change is hard to take place, especially for something like this. They have to train their teams to use Blender, which is a new software for a lot of them, and they have also to create a new pipeline, bring a new ecosystem with third-party add-ons and tools and so on. Money-wise, even though Blender is free, I'm sorry to say that studios don't care a lot because the price of software licenses and subscriptions can be less than 5% of an employee's yearly salary. So I don't think that price is a very attractive reason for them to jump ship to using Blender to be honest. Now imagine the average 3D artist will probably get paid $70,000 to $100,000 per year. A subscription of Autodesk Maya, for example, in addition to a couple of software like Substance Painter and ZBrush, won't be more than 5k per year, which is not gonna break the bank for most studios. And the proof is, they have no problem with paying the price for the most part. I think that the best hope, and I would say it is inevitable, that the best Blender artists of today are and will be the driving force for the software to sure become one of the top software in the industry if not the best, because you guys are the future 3D artists will go on to create game development and VFX studios of the future and without a doubt you will use Blender as the flagship software, which can hopefully bring a change and make Blender industry standard 
just like the other ones. And the good thing is that, for the time being, many studios are currently using Blender to a certain extent. Mostly in the studios, but at least it means there is hope for the future. The best example that comes to mind is Barnstorm VFX, that we created a video about if you are interested in more details. In fact, I recommend you take a look at the video to see what Blender is capable of and how big studios are using Blender to create amazing stuff. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.